What's up guys? So my first season is officially in the books. A lot of lessons learned. Let's talk about it. What's up YouTube? It's Baker. Welcome back to Blue Line Morphs. New to the channel, please subscribe and then don't forget to be able to give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, cool. Welcome. Come back. Thank you for continuing to follow this uh, journey. As always, guys, listen, I greatly appreciate it. I post every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. At least I try to. Hit me up on Instagram, blue underscore line, underscore morphs, and Facebook, blue line morphs. Eventually, I'll stop doing that, guys. But until then, I'm going to keep doing it. Shameless plugs, right? It is what it is. Um, Saturday, I'll post this video on Saturday. It's like 1.40 in the afternoon. I'm going to head into work, and I'll probably be stuck there for the next three days. If I get one more video in, I should be able to post on Monday. I'll find some time. I have a video planned out for that already. But if not, I apologize in advance. But regardless, Tuesday night, I'll be off. So if I don't have a video on Monday, I'm going to go live on Tuesday. So stand by for that. Everything's doing well, guys. Uh, if you watched yesterday's video, you saw those two new girls. I tried to feed them today. It's only been four or five days since I had them. Just figured I'd give it a shot. The Sterling uh, killed the live rat. She's eating it now. And the killer leopard clown wanted nothing to do with the live. I think they were always fed frozen thawed. So maybe I should keep them on that. I'm not entirely sure. Plus I can get bigger meals into them. Either way, they're breed ready. They're good to go. I like to put some weight on it. Um, the Aussie boy, he ate in shed. I'm really happy about that. He's up over 200 grams. We'll see. Um, not counting my chickens. Hopefully I'll be able to breed them this year. We'll see what happens. Uh, everything else doing really well, guys. My ASF's having some issues, but they're like not taking care of their, their litter. So comment down below. Uh, some people said I should maybe put seed in there, put some extra fat in there, some nuts. Uh, I do feed them, you know, th this uh, Missouri uh, food. Uh, normally they, they, they were doing really well with the first the first litter. The first litter's over here. I'm raising up for a second colony, but they're kind of neglecting the other two litters and eating some of them. So we're having our issues again with the ASF's. My big Norwegian rat's doing well. Probably get into that. Try to make a couple litters of them coming up soon. Uh, as always, guys, listen, next weekend, I believe, I'm going to head out to PA, go, go visit Aaron, definitely check his facility out. I'll make a video about that. Pick it up with another girl, so stay tuned for that. Let's get right into this. So, I've had a lot of questions lately about people getting into their first season of breeding. And so I'm face so itchy, went to the barber. Um, I just finished my first season of breeding, right? If you're following the channel, you know I've had my ups and downs, and I've had a lot of issues, and it's kind of like Murphy's Law for me. But with that being said, I've learned a lot, and I've experienced a lot of things. So I just thought for the people getting into breeding for their first season, some of the things I experienced and how the journey kind of took me. So if you're not interested in this video, move on, go somewhere else, go mutation creation, you know, head over, you know, head over to Olympus Reptiles, do something else. But that's what this video is about, guys. Um, all right, so let's get right into this. So I had two clutches. This... First and foremost, guys, going into this season was supposed to be um, a learning experience, right? Last summer, uh, last spring, I decided I wanted to start breeding. Uh, I thought it would be a fun hobby, right? Turn a little hobby business, as I call it. And this season, I knew I wasn't going to have a lot of stuff ready to go, but I had Big Mama, the Big Normal, then I had Luna, the, uh, the Super Russo, the White Diamond, ready to go. So I thought I'd give it a shot. This is supposed to be my learning experience. I don't mean that like, oh, the snakes that I produce, and eh, who cares, learning experience. No, but I wanted to iron out some details, get the feel for it before I really kick it into high gear. Um, so I bought a, <laughs> a homemade incubator, which it was a hunk of crap, right? We all know that. I had, I had issues with temperature with that. Uh, I, and I really wish I would just purchased a, a freshly made one or just made my own so it was done correctly, whatever the case may be. Either way, guys, I had my first clutch with Luna was just the white diamond with the banana uh, pied. Hoping, obviously, for some banana Russo het pieds. So I'll make some pintos later on down the line. I fried those eggs, right? And I, we know that because they all shriveled up and died. Now, at first, I thought it was maybe fertility issues or I thought maybe, you know, they just kind of is what it is the eggs went bad but then as I put the second clutch from Big Mama in we had the same issues obviously I, I put the the press and seal over it so that I could keep some humidity some moisture in there they still kind of got to deflate and if you watch that cutting video you know that they were super dried out and I had to uh potentially add water or resurrect a few of them and a couple of them had their issues but let's get into that so my first clutch died right we all know that got fried with the second clutch, I've experienced a lot of things with this second clutch. First and foremost, I cannot stress this enough. I'm going to do a whole video about, like, if you're going into your first season, 
what I recommend preparing for because I just got out of my first season, right? I don't have all the experience in the world. I don't have multiple seasons, but all I have is my first season, my first experience. So I know what it's like to screw up and I know the questions and concerns that I had. So stay tuned for that video. But after, big, after Luna's clutch got, got fried, I had the second clutch. It was going really well. I was monitoring it. Now, my thermostat set was at 89 degrees. Obviously, we know I had the temperature spikes, right? So it got too hot in there. So when I cut that clutch open, they were super dried out. And it was really fortunate because I had watched a video from Billy from Mutation Creation where he actually added uh, some lukewarm water into some of the eggs that were a little more dried out. And had I not seen that, I probably wouldn't have taken those measures. So even though I essentially screwed up the clutch from a, a shitty incubator, I essentially saved the clutch by putting water into it. So if you go into your first season, you have your eggs, and they look dried out when you cut them, add a little bit of uh, lukewarm water, room temperature water. So if you plan on cutting, uh, what I'm going to do next year, even though obviously I'm going to have a better incubator, I'm going to have like a whole, I don't know how you're going to say it, I, don't say, I can't think of the word, cauldron, right? A little, I don't know, pitcher, yeah, pitcher of water that's been sitting in the room that, that's war, um, room temperature for the eggs, maybe a little bit warmer just because they're coming out of that 89 degree uh, temperature. So I added that in there. With that being said, we had our issues after that. I had hard belly. Now, I, I spoke to a few people who have been breeding for years and years and years. They've only experienced hard belly once or twice in their entire career. I had two eggs, uh, two out of eight, had hard belly. Now, hard belly essentially is when the yolk inside of the snake turns bad, hardens up. It essentially becomes like a hard-boiled egg inside. At least once I got that out, that was what the consistency kind of felt like. So, I had, I was faced on my buddy Mike from Red Lake Pythons. Shout out to him. Uh, make that Batman for me. Thank you. So, I, I was FaceTiming him. I was showing him them. I also I also had uh, a couple other people reaching out to me saying, listen, like some of those things look a little bloated. Sometimes when they're hashing, the blow goes down. However, you might have hard belly. The way I, I ultimately determined it was hard belly by not only speaking to everybody else, but you could actually see it in the belly of the animal. You could see like a purplish color. It was almost like you could see the the mass, I guess you could say, or you can also see that the the, the skin was getting stretched because it was so large. Um, I had two incidents with that. What you have to do with that is you have to slowly kind of pinch it and push it down really slowly and gently. Unfortunately, one of the snakes was so... Um, the mass was so large in there that the snake did not make it. It had to be euthanized. And the second snake, the one banana, I did get the mass out. Um, if you're looking for a video on that, go to Justin Krabelka's, um channel. He is one from years ago where he really does a really good job with it. Obviously, it's Justin. But definitely check it out there. I didn't post it uh, because uh, we did have a little blood and stuff like that. So I, I just didn't want to post it. It's really that simple. Um, so I did get the other mass out of the banana. That eventually did pass away overnight, which is really unfortunate. But then, on top of that, I had three snakes that wanted to eat on their, the pro, on their own, no problem, and three that didn't want to eat. So then I had an assist feed. Uh, going through the assist feeding, um, I will say this. If you're going to try to assist feed for the first time, if you think you hurt, well, first of all, be gentle, right? There are small, fragile creatures when they're, when they're hatchlings. But they can take a little more punishment than you think. So my biggest issue with the assist feeding is I wasn't putting the mouse or the rodent down its throat for, uh, far enough. And now having done it and, and done it twice now with my snakes, the best course of action is get it at least two-thirds away in there, up to the shoulders of the mouse, a little bit past, and then hook those teeth in. Eventually they get eaten. I still haven't had those snakes take their own live meals yet. They look into the one looks interested, the one doesn't. So we're making our way through that. So long story short, guys, in review my first season, I experienced uh, an egg, uh, batch of eggs go bad because my incubator. I had another batch dried out. I actually had to add water to save them. Then I had hard belly in two of my animals. And then I had to assist feed the other animals. With all that being said, um, I probably wouldn't change it for the world. And that might seem weird because I did lose a whole clutch of eggs. I did have two other eggs die on me. Uh, two other snakes die. I mean, the one died in the egg. But I say that because everything is a learning curve and everything is a learning experience, right? If you get into something, into something new, into some, some sort of hobby, and it goes smooth as can be right away, um, I feel like it's going to screw you up in the long run. Because when you do face obstacles, or you do face that trials and tribulations, you want to be able to get through that and figure it out. So I'm really happy I experienced the hard belly. I know how to deal with it now. Obviously, now I know how to catch it sooner and earlier so the mass doesn't get that big that hard. Uh, I know how to deal with assist feeding now, okay? I know what clutches look like when they're dried out, right? Um, 
So all in all, my first season, even though I had my issues, I do consider it a success. Because I did sell my first uh, Python that I made to Kristen and Mikey. And I also have you know a couple down over here that are getting shipped out. And I also did produce some animals on my own. So all in all, successful season. I've had my issues. I've had my trials and tribulations. Everything has been a really, really good learning experience. And I can't thank you guys enough for helping me along the journey. And everyone, I'll reach out to people, messaging people, texting people, FaceTiming people. And everybody in this hobby is just so, so eager to help and so, so eager to lend like a, a helping hand. You know, everyone's got busy lives. And, you know, again, Mike from Redline Python sitting there on FaceTime for 45 minutes, like trying to figure this out. But all in all, we're through our first season. I'm on to the second season. I should have 10 or 11 girls. I'm probably going to give two of these girls a season, not season off. They're, they're not quite big enough. They're only about 18 months, two years old. I'm going to let them go for another year. But we have about 10 girls. So definitely look forward to some of those videos. I'm going to be talking about what are we matching up. and let you guys decide some of my pairings. All in all, guys, we're doing well. We're going to keep this thing moving. We're going to get some new equipment, new incubator in here. Got hashing racks on their way. As always, guys, I really appreciate all the support, all the respect. Definitely hit me up on Instagram this weekend because I'm going to be... I'll be real busy, but I'm going to be at work, so can't let the time go by. As always, guys, comment down below. Mess me on Instagram. What do you guys think? How was your first season? Okay? And let me know. As always, guys, I greatly appreciate it. Be safe. Always remember, watch your six.